Plagioclase crystallizes in the triclinic system. However, loose euhedral crystals like this example from Erebus and Antarctica are very rare. Instead, crystals tend to be embedded as major rock-forming minerals in a host of different igneous and metamorphic rocks. Here we see a classic example of anorthite crystals within basalt. Notice that the crystals are tabular, meaning that they're elongate in one direction. In this gabbro, the color difference between the plagioclase and the bulk rock is very similar. But we can see the plagioclase crystals by looking at the perfect cleavage and the flashes from those surfaces towards our eye. In lab, we tend to deal with cleaved masses, where the perfect cleavage is one of the most iconic characteristics. There's also going to be vitreous to pearly non-metallic luster and colors ranging from gray to colorless. The most important criteria to look for is the presence of polysynthetic twinning, which will appear as mechanical grooves on cleavage faces. The presence or absence of polysynthetic twinning is the best way to differentiate plagioclase from potassium feldspar. Plagioclase encompasses a solid solution between albite, sodium rich, and anorthite, which is calcium rich. In some crystals, we can see that solid solution change across the crystal represented in different colors. Here, from purple cores to white rims. One member of the solid solution is called labradorite. Here, we see example of labradorite showing beautiful polysynthetic twinning and a stunning iridescence called labradorescence that tells you specifically that this is a labradorite 